focusing on a few episodes, mostly from earlier seasons, which showcase Squidward's abilities in painting, sculpture, and any other physical medium. Then maybe we can determine if Squidward really is as bad of an artist as the show seems to present. First, I want to start with the episode Artist Unknown, from Season 2, Episode 18, which showcases a lot of Squidward's abilities, or rather, his lack thereof. Or does it? The episode, in summary, tries to present Spongebob as an amazing artist and Squidward as a mediocre, egotistical, and close-minded one. Now, I know this episode is mostly just a story of a self-absorbed, cynical person versus an optimistic, selfless person, and is not meant to be taken literally. But what if we did? Now, throughout the episode, Spongebob pretty much has the powers of a god. He makes a perfect circle by going through the process of constructing a human face backwards. He makes a mosaic from randomly ripped up pieces of paper, and he sculpts a human figure by tapping a pillar of marble once. All the while, Squidward fails miserably at everything he does, from drawing a basic circle to trying to make a single scratch in a pillar of marble. But is it fair to attribute this to a lack of skill, or more because SpongeBob's supernatural artistic powers are intimidating and frustrating to the point he can't perform normally? Between this, Squidward says that SpongeBob needs to learn the rules of art. Also, people have been harassing me with this image. This is slander. I do not sound like Squidward. I do not sound like Squidward. But he's kind of right. I mean, I think what he means is fundamentals, which are not really rules, but guidelines and skills that people use to make art, such as color theory, perspective, form, anatomy, line, and so on. Clearly, SpongeBob already knows these things and more. So if this video was titled, Is Squidward a Better Artist Than Spongebob? Then the answer would be no. But compared to someone who isn't a god, is he? Well, let's continue. Eventually, Squidward degrades Spongebob out of jealousy, and Spongebob leaves, thinking he has failed his instructor. Later on, when an art collector visits Squidward's class, he shows him this small sculpture, which, I mean, it's interesting in a surreal way. If the scale was increased drastically, it would look like your average contemporary sculpture, instead of something you'd find in a gift shop. And then he shows him the famous Bold and Brash, which demonstrates a solid attempt at abstraction and has a pleasing color scheme. What I find most amusing about this piece is that it's become a bit of a meme on the internet. So much so that several artists have tried replicating it on YouTube with impressive results. What I found even more intriguing was before this video, I didn't really know what brash meant until I found the full definition. Self-assertive in a rude, noisy, or overbearing way. Does that sound like a familiar personality type? That opens up something strange. Why would Squidward call what is clearly a stylized self-portrait of himself confident and arrogant? Is Squidward more self-aware than we realize? Does his narcissism also come with secret self-loathing? Or did the writers just need a word that rhymed with trash? Probably the latter, but eh. The art collector famously rejects these pieces. More life belongs in the trash! and is attracted to Spongebob's sculpture. So I guess he just has an affinity for Greek-looking statues, meaning he might have just not been interested in Squidward's more abstract art and wanted more classical sculpture, although he is pretty rude about it. Yes, I understand the irony of that statement on this channel. The art collector then demands more of Spongebob's art after Squidward accidentally decapitates it, which means he tries to get Spongebob back. But when Spongebob returns, instead of using his free passionate style of work, Spongebob tries to follow what Squidward taught him. Remember in the beginning when Squidward made that crummy circle? Well, when he legitimately tries to get Spongebob to do the task, he makes a far better circle. Sure, it looks more like an oval, but that may be because of the angle of the chalkboard. Interesting. Spongebob keeps mentioning this book, which I assume is full of fundamentals, although it could be full of Squidward's weird art manifesto for all we know. Whatever the case, he treats the book 